Or are you too busy ignoring me? <laughs> Amen. Amen. We got some announcements this morning. I want to remind you of our regular services. Every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., every Sunday evening at 6. Uh, on Sunday evenings, we're going through the book of 1 Corinthians right now. Amen. So I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Amen. It's a good opportunity to get a, a good, solid understanding of the Bible. I mean, we don't get theological on it, but we do go through it and, and, and relate it to, to how it relates to us. Amen. So, you know, it's, we're having a good time. So I want to encourage you to be a part of that uh, tonight at 6. Also, we have our midweek service at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. Um, on Wednesdays, we're doing... Uh, uh, the book of Acts uh, so you know what uh, the book of Acts is exciting uh, we just got into the conversion of Paul and the road to Damascus uh, it's really good the, the, the church is taking off and, 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 and it, it's a powerful powerful time so I want to encourage you to be a part of that amen uh, also this uh, this fr uh, Friday Saturday and Sunday coming up uh, there is a three-day revival in Rosarito, Mexico. Amen. So I want to encourage you, if you can be a part of that, to come on down. Uh, let me know. Uh, we can uh, give you the, the information needed as to the location and the hotel or if you guys want to spend the night there. It'll be open to the church for Friday and Saturday. Uh, even if you go down there for, for a day trip, go down to Rosarito, hear the word of God and come back. To be pretty good, so we want to encourage you to be a part of that. If you haven't given to that yet, um, you know you have until Wednesday. But uh, if you have, thank you, Jesus, Amen. Uh, it'll be a blessing to the church down there. Uh, you know what? Like I, I always say, you know we're New Destiny International Ministry, Amen. Which means we take pride in, in helping out the churches, Amen, around the world, Amen. So you know what? Uh, you be a part of that. You allow God, Amen, to bless you. Um, so those, that's that. Then also we have our conference coming up uh, on uh, April the 27th through the 30th. Uh, it's going to be a little different this year. It's the 27th is a Tuesday, so it's going to be Tuesday through Friday. Uh, usually we do Monday, a one night service, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We have three in the morning, three in the, uh, one in the evening. Uh, this year it's going to be one on Tuesday. And then uh, we're going to start our regular schedule on Wednesday. It's going to be a good time. Uh, for the Bible conference, uh, this also will be a little different this year because of restrictions. As if the restrictions are still in place by the time of conference, uh, they're only allowing um, six people per church to go. Amen. So uh, if you want to go, let me know. Um, you can be a part of this. It's a really good time down in uh, Al Centro. We get we get to go down there. We hear some amazing uh, preaching. The song service is amazing. It, it's just a really, really good time uh, to be a part of this. Um, they do. They are going to be practicing the whole social distancing and and all that kind of stuff, you know, to to abide by the the local regulations. Um, if it opens up between now and then, because things are starting to open up, uh, then the, they may open it up for everybody. But as of right now, uh, they're asking us for three couples or or six individuals, amen. So if you're interested, let me know. I can give you the hotel information. There is a discount at the hotel because uh, El Central does it every year. So there's that, that. Also, we have Wichita, Kansas. Amen, Wichita, Kansas, amen. We're gonna go to Wichita, Kansas. Uh, matter of fact, I haven't called Pastor Henry yet, but on Thursday the 8th through, ju through Sunday, July the, uh, this is July, Thursday, July 8th through Sunday, July 11th. If we can all uh, be a part of that, we can rent a van if we need to, if we want to drive, if, we, if you guys want to fly, we can fly. Um, but whatever it is, we're going to go out there and uh, it's a three, it's a, it's a four day rally. And, uh, and uh, what they do is, is they, they just, you know, it's just a rally preaching and street preaching. They're doing everything to just bring, make some noise, go on over there. And uh, last year, or the last one they had, because there was things going on last year, they uh, over, over uh, there was over 200, 300 people in attendance and about 50 youth gave their lives to God. It's not a youth rally, but a lot of youth have come to it because that, that church is alive, man. They are, 
alive. Pastor Henry is a guy, he is alive. He is extremely alive. You be with him for five minutes, man, he'll drive you nuts, amen. Because mm -hmm. he's so active, amen. So he's a great, great guy, good friend of mine, known him for many, many years, amen, since both of us were disciples back in the 90s, so he's a great guy. So you know what, uh, we want to be a part of that. Uh, we go. Uh, we'll probably not have service here on that Sunday. We'll probably be coming back on that Sunday. So that's gonna probably, that'll probably be the plan as of right now if we can get a, a group to go out there. So that'll be a good time. Amen. And I believe that's all the announcements. I think so. Okay. Thank you. Amen. All right, man, that's all the announcements. We're gonna lift up an offering, man. Let's worship, man. a little off because usually I'm looking at it on my, my screen here also. Amen. Uh, you know what? This morning, amen, you give with an open heart. Amen. You you allow God to bless you this morning. You know what? Don't 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 miss an opportunity, amen, to 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 graciously give back to to God. Amen. In honor of the things he's given to us. Amen. So you know what? This morning, amen, we have the, the Zal app, the Pop Money app. They're both linked to the phone number on the screen. 909 496-4594. Amen. You give. You allow God to bless you. Amen. And all the all the money that comes in, it goes strictly to, to the building and all the you know the things we have going on here. Amen. If you wanted to give to the Rosarito uh, outreach of the the, the the revival, amen. Uh, go ahead and just write it down. Revival or put it on your on the thing. Let me know. We'll make sure that money goes straight over there. Amen. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, we are going to go to Rosarito, amen, with the blessed, a blessed offering, amen. We're going to bless that church. It's going to be good. And I'm excited, amen, for what God's using our church to do. You know, it doesn't take, it doesn't take, amen. Uh, you got you to remember, you know, there's a lot of, uh, people are always looking at numbers, amen, and, 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 and we're a small church. We, we are, we are a small church. You know, we've struggled this past year just to even remain open, but we've God has been gracious to us, and we're a small church. And when people come and they look and they see numbers, and that's what happens. They say, well, how can we touch the world for Jesus? There's only a few of us. Well, you remember, amen, there was there was uh, uh, Gideon's army. There was a ton. There was thousands upon thousands of men, ready, valid men that were going to go, go to battle. And, and what did God tell Gideon? He says, you know what? You have too many. You have too many. Right now, you know what? Uh, uh, let's, let's cut them back and he brought them all the way back to 300 men so that they can go into battle and get the victory and God gave them a great victory and that's what God does you know what it doesn't matter the number what matters is God is in the center and he's going to bring victory so you know what you give with an open heart and then allow God to use you because we're touching the world for Jesus and God wants to use you to help move the works of God forward amen so you give you allow God to bless you amen so let's bow our hearts as brother Jesse bless the gift and the giver Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks, Lord, for the opportunity to gather in your house, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you bless the gift and the giver, Lord. Father God, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you put your hand upon your people, Father God, Lord. upon their finances, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, these are willing people. They're willing to give back what's yours, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you have poured upon us, Lord. Lord, we, we thank you, Lord each and every day for all that you do for us, Father God, Lord. So here we are with obedient hearts, giving back what righteously belongs back to you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And what mighty God we serve. What mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him and at the door. What mighty God we serve. <coughs> This morning, I want to preach on hope and faith. Matter of fact, I didn't even give this sermon a, a, some fancy title. A lot of the pastors, we like to give titles and try to be creative on what we call our sermons. And, and actually, it actually helps us, amen, as we look back into our notes. Um, but this one, just hope and faith. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Because we need hope. And we need hope to build our faith. This week, 
this week was the one year anniversary of when the world declared that we are in a pandemic. It was this week, last year. These past 12 months have been rough. They've been hard on so many people. Amen? It's been tough. This past year has been tough for everybody. It hasn't been business as usual. I've even talked about it in previous sermons about last year. We thought the worst thing that would happen for the last year was going to be the death of Kobe Bryant. And although that was a tragedy, the pandemic, it overshadowed everything. So when we look back on the past year, for most people, all they can see is their heartache. People, all they can see looking back in the past 12 months is their sickness, their loneliness. The loss of their loved ones. What did 2020 bring you? Well, I lost my, my I lost my loved one. Somebody I cared about. Somebody I didn't realize I cared that much about. And and and, and we look back in the last year, it's been it's been a really tough time. Last year, when they made the pandemic announcement, we we're being told that by Easter it would be over. They say, oh, by Easter, we'll be done. We'll be done by Easter. And I remember they were talking about the pandemic, and, 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 and at the time, Rialto was our mother church, and, and every year they had a, an Easter picnic. Pastor Rosa put it together every year, and we would go, all the churches go, we have softball and everything else. And I remember we kept, me and Pastor Renzo kept talking, you know, so we're going to have the picnic, we're not going to have the picnic. But that was the biggest thing we we're thinking about. Well, they said it might be done by Easter. Some said that the pandemic was not real, and that the government was lying to us. Every media outlet spoke of the worst and left no hope. I mean, they, they talked about the tragedy of everything, which brought so much fear in the hearts of everyone around the world. We're now officially one year into the pandemic. And thinking about that, that's kind of hard to believe. We've been dealing with this stuff so much, the mask wearing and social distancing, the dots on the floors at the markets, and and and, and, and it, it's starting to get back to a little bit of normality because you can see the crowds are starting to, to, to come back again. But we went through that so much this past year, it's hard to believe that it's only been one year. Almost feels like it's been going on for the past five years. Because it's been so it's been so burdensome on all of us. And we're now finally having things reopen, like churches. A lot of churches were closed. A lot of churches will never open again. Restaurants are starting to open up. Thank you, Jesus. I love restaurants. And restaurants love me. Shopping malls are even opening. And yes, even Disneyland's opening. Martha said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Disneyland is even opening. They got an open date scheduled. Even though your favorite place is opening back up and travel restrictions are beginning to be lifted, the pain, the hurt, the loneliness and the sickness that we dealt with this past year will remain in us right. and forever be a part of who we are. Right. You'll remember this forever. Those of you old enough, you remember where you're at when the planes went into the towers on 9 11. Those of you who are old enough will remember where, where you're at. When the big North Ridge earthquake hit. I remember where I was at when the news announced that Reagan was shot. Go well, even further back. I remember where I was at when my mom said Albert Presley died. Yeah, you're a little old there. I get it. Some of you guys said, who the heck is Albert Presley? It's amazing how the younger generation is not older. It's just amazing. My boy, they think it's just history stuff. During this past 
past year, we sat eagerly looking at the news. Rick, waiting for Dr. Anthony Fauci or Barbara Ferrer to bring us some news of hope. We, we, we waited. News of an end to the madness we call the coronavirus. This year, there is one thing that drove us to survive. One thing that was the foundation of what we all were looking for when we listened to the news waiting for the answer. And that was hope. We were waiting for that hope. We were waiting for a glimpse of hope during this whole time. We look at the news and we know that all it is is doom and gloom and all they're talking about is the death and the numbers and the numbers and the numbers and the numbers. Amen. And, and, and if you work at the hospital, you see the numbers and then, and then like my, I'm, out, I'm out and about all the time and my, 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 we were essential so I'm out and everywhere and I remember going to downtown LA and it was a ghost town. Never in my entire life did it look like that. And we look at the news uh, for, for a glimpse of hope because we're listening, amen, to Dr. Fauci and, and Barbara Ferrer. We're listening. We're saying, is there going to be some hope now? Is there, and, 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 and at some point, our, our, the only hope we wanted was an open restaurant. Because when we find hope, we have faith. And without faith, we miss God. See, we need hope so we can begin to build our faith. But if we don't have faith, we're going to miss God. So you cannot have faith without hope. And when you have hope, you will have faith. This is something that every Christian needs to have centered in their hearts and in their minds. Paul, tell, Paul writes to the Hebrews and he says, he says in Hebrews 11, 1 and 2, he says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by this, elders obtain a good testimony. See, hope can, can only come when faith is present. See, Paul says that in this, that's how the elders obtain a good testimony. And what's a testimony? A testimony speaks to the, to the life lived for Jesus. And without faith and hope, it is impossible to have a testimony in Jesus. I have, I have faith. When we speak a testimony, you know, say, okay, I want to give a testimony. What do you want to give? Okay, let me, let me say something. Well, you know, I want to just thank God for my salvation. And you know what? I used to be this, but now I'm that. And you know what? I was going through this, and it, and, and it looked like nothing was happening. But you know what? I kept focusing on God, and God came through, and he blessed me. And you know what? I couldn't pay my rent, but I didn't move out anyways. And God still blessed me and paid the rent. And, and then we have hope, and we have faith in our testimony. That's why Paul says that in, in, in this that the elders obtain a testimony. Who are the elders? It's not the old people. It's those who are living for God, who, is, who, who, are, who are staying in the race, who are not changed, who are, who are not wavering and saying, you know what, God, no matter what, I'm going to live for you. I've given my life to you. I'm not going to turn away from you. See, the elders doesn't always, uh, doesn't always uh, 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 speak of the, the age. Because you, you could be a man in your 70s and 80s and be, and be a, a child of God, a new convert. But you could also be in your 20s, a man, and been serving God already for 15 years. So it, it, it changes to, from people to people, but it's in your testimony, amen, that there's evidence of God in hope and faith that, that will shine through your testimony in Jesus. So I want to read out of the book of Romans, chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. <coughs> Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. Paul says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith 
into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also, this is the part everybody loves, but we also glory in tribulation. 2020 was tribulation. No matter who you are, no matter how fake you thought it was, it was tribulation. Now, that tribulation produces perseverance. It gets that fight in you to continue to move forward. And perseverance, character. And character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who give, who has, was given to us. Gotta pray good and bless your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul says tribulation. This, this, this past year is a perfect example of tribulation. It, it, is, it, is, it is a perfect example of, of how we've had to go through some battles during the pandemic, we, we, it's a, right now we're living. Right now you're living in a time where God is taking the opportunity to get everyone's attention. But the issue is, is some of us, Amen, are not looking back towards God. Have you ever known somebody, Amen? Uh, people say I have this effect on them sometimes. I can shake your hand, and look you in the eye, and they won't want to look at me. Like, what? What would you do? What'd you do? Nothing. Shake me in the hand. Oh, they, just want, just want, they, they get a guilt. They feel guilty. But I'm not God. See, people do that. This past year, God, it, we've been gone through some tribulations, some some trials, some problems, some hurt, some heartaches, some some anguish, and, 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 and it's in that, that that God is trying to pr uh, produce perseverance, and and, and 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 yet, as we are serving God, and as we listen to the Word of God, and as we're reading the Word of God, what happens, Amen? We take our eyes off of God and say, God, I, I love you. I, 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 want, I want you in my life, but I can't look you in the face. See, perseverance is not giving up. It's remaining in the things of God. Remaining, amen, in, in, in the fight, amen, that God has called us to. And this is not easy, especially in the time of tribulation. This past year, it, 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 to persevere this past year has not been easy. It's not been a thing, amen, where you say, I, 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 want to, I want to serve God. Matter of fact, I dare to say that for a lot of people, this past year they have said, they have said, I don't want to do this anymore. More than they've said, I want to serve God. Because when times of tribulation comes, it is easy to say, God, I am done with this. I don't see any hope. I, how can I have faith and, and be built up to want to continue, amen, in the things that you have called me to do in the calling of my life and the, and, the, and the big glorious thing that you want to change in me? How can I continue in that if I feel there's no hope for me? How can I have faith, God, if, there's, if, if I don't have hope? How can I even have faith? And it's in that perseverance that God wants to build, uh, build us and, and, and change uh, not just, amen, uh, the destination of our soul, but He wants to change our heart. He wants to change our mind. He wants us to learn how to fall and lean upon Him. And that's why Paul talks about character. See, one thing about character this character cannot be purchased. No matter what, you cannot purchase character. Character is something that is built up within us. And character is determined by the way we respond to circumstances in life. You see, we don't inherit character. You say, you say well, <coughs> he acts just like his dad. Okay, he inherited a personality, but character is different. 
Because dad may go through something and have it a lot different than son would. Why? Because he got different characters. Now the personality and, 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 the, and the responses and, the, and, and what they vocalize may be the same words because they have the same personality, but their character will be different. See, God's building our character. During this time of pandemic, there's been so many uh, 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 struggles in life. People have lost their jobs. People, people have lost family members. And I tell you what, if, if you lost your finances and your family member, you feel like there's no hope. Right? You feel like there's no, there's no, there's no way. Where am I going to turn? What am I going to look towards? But God is saying, you know what, uh, Paul writes and he says, you know what, that perseverance, amen, is going to build your character. Because character is that thing that, that you say, you know what, uh, when, when I talk to people, I says, you know what, my Bible says, uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I ain't worried about that. The devil's a liar, so is his boyfriend. Character is a thing that builds up, that, that allows you to stand upon the word of God and say, you know what, I have faith now. So your character will allow the faith to be shown and to, be, to shine through. Your character, amen, will not just show your faith, but it will bring hope to those who are around you. And there's people around you who are counting upon your character to bring the hope that they need so that they can begin to feel, build faith, amen. But unless we persevere, we'll never get to that point. It's hope or faith can only be increased within us as we develop and not give up. Your, the hope that you have in Jesus cannot, cannot increase. It cannot grow. I can't be stronger for God today if I'm not will, uh, tomorrow if I'm not willing to go through things today. See, I, I, I want more faith tomorrow. I want more hope tomorrow. But unless I'm willing to get through today, it's never going to build up. But the only way, amen, that it's going to build up, amen, is if I persevere. And the only way that the people around me are going to know that this whole Jesus stuff is real is if I have to allow all that to build my character. See, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 to 25, <coughs> that's Hebrews 10, 23 to 25, Paul says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Let us consider one another. In verse 25, not forsaking the assembly of your, ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting. The word exhorting is to encourage one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Verse 24 says, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. This is the purpose of the church. That we consider one another. That we stir up together the love and good works. That it's us, amen. Uh, this means that, 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 that to encourage one another. To lift up one another. To support one another. To love one another. If you can't, if you can't find love and encouragement, support, amen, at church, amen, where are you going to find it? Dr. Fauci ain't going to show you. Barbara Pereira ain't going to show you. These and that may be opening, but they're not going to show you. They claim to be the happiest place on earth, amen, but there's nothing, there's nothing there that will take you to heaven. See, I, I don't want to be at the happiest place on earth. I want to, I want to be at the best place in heaven. See, and, 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 and Paul says, he says, you know what, uh, that, that when we come together is when everything becomes, comes back together. It says, in verse 25, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Forsaking the assembly of God is what happens 
when we remove ourselves, or like this past year with the restrictions, when, when, when we were removed from church. See, church, that's why church is so important. People think, well, well, I'm saved. I don't need to go all the time. I don't need, you know what? And, 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 and I got it. You know what? I have a relationship with God. I just don't want one with the church. Because Paul says that we're forsaking the assembly of ourselves. And we say, well, I'm okay. Yeah, but you're forsaking the assembly of ourselves. But I'm fine. No, but you're missing it. The church. How can we fulfill God's word in bringing hope and faith to the church, amen, if we're not there? How can we say, God, use my life when I have a relationship with you, but as long as it's with you, I don't want to deal with them. I got enough going on in my life. It's all about my family. It's all about my family. You know, Paul writes and he says, he says that all this builds character. And it's in our character where the people who do not know God, who are not serving Jesus, and I don't, and it doesn't matter if they knew him at one time. If they're not, if they're not saved and sanctified and watching the blood today, they're not making it to heaven. So it doesn't matter what their past was, it matters what their future is going to be. And unless we begin to allow God to have access to our entire life and begin to be part of what God is doing and not forsaking the assembly of ourselves, our character will never be built enough that those on the outside will see enough Jesus in us to give their lives to God. But I want them to make it to heaven. I love my kids. I love my grandkids. I love my sisters, my brothers. I love my uncles, my aunts, Theo Diaz. And build character. Perseverance. Because if you're forsaking the assembly of God, he says, don't forsake the assembly of yourself. What's the assembly? It's bringing the coming together of the church. And if we forsake that, we still expect God to save them? How selfish can we be? God, you do this for me. But let them mend for themselves. See, when we remove ourselves from church or get removed like the way, the way they've done to us with the restrictions this past year, we remove we actually remove the opportunity to exhort, encourage. We move the opportunity to love and to build up one another. Have you ever had a day in your life where things are going messed up and you say, man, I need to get to church. I just, I just, need, to, I just need to feel God. I need to get to church. How many other people do you think feel the same way sometimes? And they're built and they're, and they're waiting and hoping for the character of the Christian to be there to help build them up, exhort. So many people this past year have said they did not need to go to church. Because the building's not the church, the people are. And this may be true to a certain degree. However, to be the church is to be peace. It's to be hope. It's to be encouragement. To be the church is to be salvation, is to be healing, is to be comfort, is to be love. So we're, if we are not in church, not only is it difficult for us to be the church and all that it is, but we are also not receiving the very same things. It's amazing how, the, how, 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 how people could be super Christians, but yet forsake the assembly of God. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, I'm a super Christian. I, I, could, I could do everything. I could, I could leap 10 Bibles in a single bound. I, 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 could, I could pray for 10 backsliders with one hand. But yet, missing it. Because I am so close to God. 
that I can go ahead and miss this week. And it's not about church numbers. It's not. It has nothing to do with church numbers. It's not about the finances. It's not. I've learned something this past year. For a big portion of the past year, we've survived on just a just a couple of couple of people giving. That's it. Including myself and my wife. And as our rent continued, because our rent continued to go up this past year for the building. And we paid it and we paid it and we paid it as it went up. And when it got up to the last increase, well, I couldn't make that last increase, and it was pretty high. Say, God, to your will, your bill. Let that will be done. We talked to the to the owner at the time. Cut our rent down almost in half. It was okay. God says, okay, I'll take care of you. Because of perseverance. Because of character. Because of hope. Because of faith. So it has nothing to do with, with how many people have, have their bottoms in a chair or how much money comes into the offering because God takes care of that. God, God, God ain't worried about numbers. And, and as far as the finances, God always takes care of that. What it's about is the heart of the individual on whether they're going to build their character enough to bring someone else to Jesus. Whenever we start a sentence, and I've said this over and over again, when, when confronted with this topic or this subject, and when we, end, when, we end, when we start our part of this, the conversation with, well, I think, or well, I believe, we already lost the battle. Because your thoughts are not my thoughts, saith the Lord, for my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, for my ways are higher than your ways, saith God. So how, how can we start our conversation with what we do and defending ourselves with, well, I think, well, I believe? Your thoughts is what got you to need Jesus to begin with. Your belief got you to need Jesus to begin with. So it has nothing to do with what you think, what you believe. What does the word of God say? The Bible says, we just read it. The Bible says that we forsake ourselves by not attending church. But I can watch at home and we're at a time of social media. And, and you know, I, 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 I've, been, I've struggled with stop the whole social media thing. So all you guys at home, I struggled with, with, not, with not even airing anything anymore. But the reason why I do is because some of you are actually legitimately out of state. You can't make it here. We have a group of people in different states that actually watch us continuously. And that's why I keep it on. But if it was just for our church, for our people, the ones who have been here, I would turn it off. Because I'm doing them a disservice. I'm making their life comfortable. Right now, people are sitting there eating breakfast, drinking their coffee. Oh, what'd you say, babe? Okay. Oh, uh, I don't know what the pastor said. You know what the pastor, you know, I can't hear you. Hold on, let me turn the TV down. It's like, the pastor's too loud. He's yelling again. And, and, and we've forsaken the assembly of ourselves. When we stay at home. It's important. This is important. If we're not in church, not only is it difficult for us to be the church and all that it is, but we are still not receiving the same things. Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11, 6. Paul says, Now without faith, it is impossible to please God. For the one who draws near to him must believe that he exalt, that he exists and rewards those who seek him. See, Paul says, without faith, without faith, we cannot please God without faith. To have faith takes an action, takes it, it requires us to do something requires us to step out into something of an unknown, uh, even though it, it brings fear. To have faith means that, that you know what, to, I'm going to do something because I believe that the outcome is going to be better than where I'm at now. And, and it doesn't matter how scary that might be because I don't know, but you know what, it, I'm going to step out in faith because I believe God is going to be in control. When I got saved, 
didn't have much of an education, couldn't read very well, didn't like speaking in front of people. How could I ever become a preacher? God says, just have a little faith and let me do the rest. See, it doesn't matter what you think of your inabilities are. God don't care. He's only looking at your availability. See, the only ability you need to accomplish something in Jesus Christ is availability. You don't need a bunch of abilities. You just need availability. Make yourself available for the things of God and allow God to begin to change and build that faith and build that character and bring hope to those around you. Even when times feel hopeless, Dr. Fauci and Barbara Ferrer is reigning over your hope, dreams, and ambition. You still got to have faith. In 2 Kings chapter 7, 3 and 4, we read about the four lepers. The big famine going on. You got, you got women eating each other's children and, and, and taking, the, and taking the, uh, uh, their case to, to, the, to the king <coughs> saying, oh, we ain't her kid. And she said, we, 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 need my, we ain't my kid. And she said, we need her kid today. But we ain't my kid yesterday. I'm hungry. Let's eat her kid. King, what should we do? That's what's going on. That's how deep this, this, this starvation's going. Where people are eating children and they're, and, they're, and they're dying. See, when we get out of church, we say, well, I'm, I'm starving. I'm starving. We don't, in America, we don't know what starving is. We don't starve in America. Right. We, we, don't, we don't know what that is. We're talking about a time where the four leopards, is, is where, where your body is, is searching for nutrition to the point that it begins to to eat its own nutrition within itself, and before you know it, your, your, your organs begin to break down and you, and, you, and you die. That's starving. So here we are, the four lepers, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3 and 4. <clears throat> now therefore, now there were four lep leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine in the city, the, 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 the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come, let, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. They're saying, the life we are in right now, where we are, why are we staying right here? Why am I here? Why am I not moving anywhere? Why are we not going anywhere? If, if I go back to where we just came out of, we're going to die because there's nothing there for me anymore. But if I stay here, I'm not doing a thing and I'm dying right here in my own stink because I'm not moving. He says, but you know what? Although that's a scary thing, the Syrian army, although we know how, how, how violent they are and how vicious they are, if, if we go there, you know what? At least we have the hope that they may keep us alive as a prisoner. Maybe they'll make us a slave, but you know what? At least we're going to still live. So why are we staying in the same spot? Why am I going back to the filth that I came out of? Why am I not moving forward into the scary part where I know God can still move? And instead of moving forward to the things of God and, and what God has for our lives, amen, we stay where we're at and we stay stagnant, amen, and the water doesn't move and the mosquitoes come and it begins to stink because we haven't moved forward. Yes, I know that Syrian army looks scary. Yes, I know, amen, it doesn't look like somewhere I want to be. And yes, I know, on normal circumstances, I would never go over there. But you know what? Where I'm at, where I've been, ain't taking me nowhere either. Maybe it's time. They said, let's surrender. Most powerful statement the leprous men said. They said, let's surrender. That wasn't getting up. So we think, you know, surrender. You know what? Oh, no, no surrender. No surrender. 
And as Christians, amen, you get out of the service, amen, you feel like you're a Navy SEAL. I'll never surrender. Well, sometimes we need to surrender. The leper's man said, let's surrender. Why don't we try this hope and faith a shot? Give it a shot. Let's give hope and faith a chance. Because what we're doing made us think. Where we came from has nothing for us. But if God's going to move, he's going to take me to another place. It's going to be scary. Something I'm not used to. But we have hope and faith that he's going to keep us alive. They say, let us surrender. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 and 8. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at, at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. While you are here in the body, you are absent from God. Verse 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, yes, while pleased rather to be absent from the body than to be present with the Lord. Paul says, we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. This past year with this pandemic, amen, we walk by sight. We walk by sight what we see on TV, what we see around us and the destruction and all the chaos around us. We walk by sight. But, but, but Paul says we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. See, the leprous men, they knew that, you know what, there's trouble with the Syrian army, but they walked by faith. They didn't go by sight. They knew, it, physically, they knew that was a bad decision. But they said, but you know what? We're going to walk by faith and do this. Because there's a glimpse of hope that we may live. There's a glimpse of hope that something may happen. <coughs> the things you see in, in here will discourage you and cause you to hide in fear. This is why we walk by faith and not by sight. So we need to serve God. What do we have to lose? What do you have to lose? If you stay where you're at, you're going to get exactly what you're getting right now. You're going to get exactly what you're getting. Nothing's going to change. Because you're not walking by faith, you're walking by sight. So nothing will change. So stay where you're at. Nothing will change. Those who are at home, stay where you're at. Nothing will change. Well, I want God's blessing. I want God to move. Stay where you're at. Watch it stay the same. The leprous man said, let's surrender. And allow God to bring us home. Paul said, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. What's the worst that can happen? The leprous men understood this. The worst that can happen is that they were to die. They said, if we stay here, we're going to die. We go over there, we're going to die. Let's try something new. Maybe we'll live. Maybe we'll die. But either way, to be absent in my body, and make me present with the Lord. I never for once thought that this whole coronavirus was not real. I knew it was real. You couldn't pull off a, a hoax this big. You're not going to get the world involved in a, in a lie. It's, not, it's just too big. It's not going to happen. But I never allowed it to change my walk with God. I didn't allow it to keep me from still reaching out to those who need Jesus. Don't you think people today need Jesus more than they did last year at this time? When the coronavirus was really being announced and the pandemic was really being declared, people were still wondering if it was real, joking about it, not thinking it was real. Here we are a year later, and those same people are either not here anymore or lost people who are close to them 
have tremendous, tremendous, tremendous tragedy in their lives and finances and where they live and everything else. Don't you think those people need Jesus more today than they did last year? How will they receive it if we don't give it? Right. How will they know it exists if our character doesn't show it? See, God has a plan. But like the leprous men said, we've got to surrender. What's it going to take for you today to surrender? What more? Think about this. What more needs to happen before God can get your attention? What more does he need? You already allowed a pandemic to affect an entire world. Do we need something bigger than that because that's not enough for you? The leprous man said, let's surrender. And that's exactly what we need to do today. So you know what, this morning, we're gonna close right there. I wanna challenge you to get to your church. Those of you at home, if this is your church, you need to come back. Stop. I know of pastors who's actually looked into the camera and called out people by their name on camera. I'm not going to do that. Don't think I won't, but I'm just not going to do it today. Those of you who are not in the area, who this isn't your church, you just watch. You need to get to your church if you haven't been there already. That's where you need to be. Thank you for watching, and please continue. But don't let this substitute what God's trying to do in your life. And that goes for even those in the building. Don't allow, don't allow your thoughts while I think, while I believe. Don't allow that to take you out of the house of God. Plant yourself and don't forsake the assembly of yourself. Don't forsake the assembly of one another. Allow God to use you. Hope and faith build character. But it's only done through perseverance and tribulation. God bless you guys. It's my heart. My Father, we thank you, God, this morning, God, for your word. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, God, for, for blessing us, God. God, I pray, God, that, that we just, God, be people of perseverance, people of hope, people of faith. God, that you build a character within us, God, that we'll no longer forsake the assembly of ourselves, God, the assembly of one another, God. But teach us, God, to build one another, God, with love and hope and peace and encouragement. God, we thank you, God, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On this one? How do I shut it down? Just hit the X. Yes. Just hit the X. Um, and save your phone. Oh, end screen.